Every Friday at this idyllic little spot in Northland. Lemonade, cordial, guava paste. Lemons, woohoo. Beetroot hummus. Locals meet to trade their backyard produce. This is just a little focaccio group. Yeah, it's out the oven. Good. Some courgettes and scallopinis and some tomatoes. And they're all fed on horse manure. So. <laughs> a few eggs, some vegetables, flowers and fruits. But all this harmless produce is about to be subject to a new law. And that's because of the processed stuff, the pickles, jams and breads. It seems like total overkill. It just seems crazy to stifle community, grassroots, little things like this. Anyone who sells, barters or even gives away food will soon have to get their head around the new law. I struggle. You know, I've had to have few different people uh, give me their interpretation so that I can start to understand what what it is and I've been you know I've been having conversations about this topic for months now. The food bill doesn't put a stop to selling homegrown produce nor does it stop people trading processed foods like breads and jams but it does impose new food handling guidelines and if there's a third party involved in the food that changes everything. If I've grown this apple and decide to sell it or trade it to Natasha, that's fine, that's still exempt under the new law. But if Natasha's then on selling it to Helen, that's when the new law will kick in. Peter Russell runs Ubi, short for Out of Our Own Backyards. An organic food distribution business that takes in and gives out locally grown food. So Ubi will be subject to the food bill's requirements. The effect will be that the supply base for Ubi, which is homegrown food, um, may also need to comply to the food bill as well, in which case the cost and the knowledge and the time in developing a food safety plan would just make it prohibitive, it wouldn't be viable, and so therefore it could very much squander our supply base. Distributing food will fall into three categories, depending on the operation's size and scale. Even sausage sizzles or a local produce swap may need to be registered for basic food handling advice. There does have to be some legislation, obviously, but uh, I think it needs to be user-friendly, and this is not a user-friendly bill. Um, it's complicated, it's confusing. This is Lisa, the woman behind Lisa's Hummus. If the food bill had been around 15 years ago, Lisa says the compliance costs would mean her company would never have got off the ground. I had absolutely no money, nothing to invest at all. I had been on the benefit, so I was starting absolutely from the ground up. And so I went from that position to the fact that now Lisa has 123 employees. The intention of the food bill is to update a 30-year-old law, bring us into line with international standards and improve food safety. But people who'll have to work with it say it's too ambiguous. You know, the food bill isn't bad, OK? There's elements in the food bill that have been woven into it that are a problem. Even before it's passed into law, part of the bill, to do with growing and storing seeds, is being amended. But critics believe the bill should be thrown out completely. In, in my own community, what I see is that we take responsibility for who we buy from. Yeah. I mean, think Ubi co-founder James Samuel believes it will actually discourage small producers from providing for communities. It's concerning because it puts people in a, in a position where they're in doubt about whether they are falling within the law and whether they could be challenged and whether they could be subject to the penalties which are, are enormous. The maximum penalties for an individual, $100,000 and five years imprisonment. I'd have gone back teaching. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it at all. I mean, it's just too much. Mm, mm. You take a, a cottage industry type um, set up, even, even a small business type set up, there are so many areas where they could get it wrong that boom, you're done. You've been hit, you forgot, you forgot that, little, that little detail and they don't have the capacity to be able to understand or to get the, law, the legal help in to be able to understand to know whether they're complying. So the only safe thing to do is, is back away. Trish is a trader who won't be backing away, but she's annoyed by even the thought that a loaf of her focaccia bread could turn her into a criminal. 
Why make us lawbreakers? Our message to the government is change the law now before it goes through. Not amend it after. Change it to make things like this exempt.